Hey guys, so today I'm going to do the Calgary Anaheim round one preview and predictions for the playoffs. Um, so let's get right into it. This is going to be probably a little bit longer than the other ones because I have a lot of like info picked up here. And the playoffs finally start today though, so I'm actually really pumped, pumped for that. I'm so excited for Ottawa and Boston and like Edmonton and San Jose. Calgary and Anaheim don't play till till tomorrow, so game one is gonna be tomorrow in Anaheim at 10 10 30 p.m. Eastern time. So yeah. Now getting into the actual <clears throat> video. So their records. So Anaheim's record is 46, 23, and 15. They have 105 points. And they won the Pacific Division. Calgary was in the first wild card spot, I believe, and their record was 45, 33, and 4. 45, 33, and 4. 94 points, um, or 95, I don't know. So now the season series. So actually, Anaheim won 4 of 5 against Calgary, outscoring them only 17 to 14 overall. So the only Calgary win was an 8 to 3 pounding win in Calgary on December 4th, I believe. So that obviously got them, the, the Eagles obviously helped them out. Um, Anaheim has home ice advantage, but the problem is for Calgary that they have not won a game in Anaheim since 2004. They've lost 25 straight games in Anaheim in the regular season, so they're going to have to solve that and figure out how to beat them, because otherwise they're going to lose in, like, a few games. So they have to get that sorted out. <clears throat> so last week's game between the two teams saw the Ducks defenseman Cam Fowler knocked out of commission for two to six weeks after a Mark Gio... Gio, Gio, Gio Giordano hip check attempt turned into an awkward knee on knee collision. So it'll be interesting to see how the health considerations play out for the better team with Fowler out and Patrick Eves with 32 goals also beaten up. So he's also injured. So a good player or two good, good players out for the uh, Ducks. So I guess that'll obviously help Calgary. But Considering Anaheim has home ice advantage, and considering Calgary has struggled there and has not won there for like, what, 13 years now? They're gonna have to get their shit together. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Calgary and Anaheim are similar in terms of offense, but the Ducks are better for 5-on-5, five five, and the Flames have a better power of power play. Um, the Ducks were much better at keeping the puck out of the net, both on 5-on-5 five five and on the power penalty kill. Sorry, every time I see PK, then I think of power play kill, but no, it's P penalty kill. So they're, they're both. So the Ducks are better at five on five, and they're pretty good out of the on the power power play kill. Well, I'll just say that because that's what I always say. But the Flames do have a better power play, but the Flame, but the Ducks are good at the penalty kill. Um, so Calgary is in the playoffs for the second time in three seasons. The first one under coach Glenn Gukudsan. Sure. Who was with the Stars from 2011 to 2013, an assistant in Vancouver 2013 to 2016, and yeah. The Ducks have won the division five consecutive seasons, but have not advanced past the conference final since winning the Cup in 2007. So they won the Cup in 2007, but since then, ever since they've been in the playoffs, they have not passed the conference final. And then they, of course, won the division five consecutive times for the past five years, obviously. But obviously they have not been doing a good job at that. The Flames are 0-20-5 in the last 25 games in Anaheim. So most of them are regulation losses, so it's even worse. Every time I think about it going into overtime, I'm like, well, I'll, at least I'll get a point, but I keep forgetting it's the playoffs now, so over overtime doesn't matter. You need to win. <laughs> so the last time the Flames won in Anaheim in the regular season was on January 19th, 2004. So like I said, that's uh, like 13 years ago, because it's 2017 now, so... That's a pretty damn long time, so they are obviously they want to get their shit together and they want to win. The Flames lost all three games in Anaheim against the Ducks in the playoffs two years ago in round two. Um, in 2006, the Flames beat the Ducks 5-2 in game three in Anaheim on April 25th in the first round. So they won then in Anaheim. I don't know what year. I don't know if I don't. I don't even know. I didn't pull up the year. But that was, that was basically the last time I think they won in, in Anaheim, in a, in a playoff game. But they've been really struggling in Anaheim, so if they want to be, be, beat the Ducks, considering they have home ice advantage, they're going to have 
even if it goes to seven games, you're going to have four games there, so they're going to have to win them. <clears throat> so four players scored more than 20 goals this season for Anaheim. Ricard Raquel with 33 goals, Patrick Eves with 32 goals, 11 with Anaheim and 21 with Dallas. Jakob Silverberg with 23 goals, and Ryan K Kessler, or Keller, no, Ryan Kessler with 22 goals. Sean Monaghan has 27 goals for Calgary, and Michael Backlund has 22 goals for Calgary. The only two players for Calgary with 20-plus goals. But 12 Flames have scored 10 or more goals compared to 9 for Anaheim. So, Matthew Kachuk, Matthew I don't know how the hell to pronounce his name, it's like unpronounceable. Kachuk, I always say Kachuk, what the hell am I saying? But he's 19 years old, he has 48 points, 13 goals and 35 assists. And they were, and he was like 5th on the Flames. Um, Gul, Gulat Zan for the Ducks, like the coach, will be coaching his first NHL playoff game. Randy Car Carlisle coached 69 playoff games, 62 with Anaheim, 7 with Toronto, and won the Cup with Anaheim in 2007. Few coaches are better than Carlisle. So Raquel has 19 game-winning goals, and then he led the league despite missing the first 11 games after an appendectomy. Again, this is all over the place, so sorry if it's like all random. So five number... Um, of 50 point scores, five, five number of, huh? Five, there's, hey, five 50 point scores on the Ducks. Getzlaff, 73, Kessler, 58, Eves, 51, 40, 14 with Anaheim, 37 with Dallas, and, and Raquel, 51. <sighs> Eves was traded to the Ducks on February 24th. Now moving on to Brian Elliott. So Brian Elliott was on St. Louis last year, so he was on St. Louis, and then he allowed 11 goals in the conference finals against the San Jose Sharks last season. He started the first three games of that series, but didn't play again until Game 6 after being re replaced by Jake Allen. <clears throat> Anaheim finished the season with a 14 point with a 14 game point streak, 11-0-3. Anaheim has been a limit. This is a key fact. Um, well, this is legit, just not even about the first round, but Anaheim has been eliminated from the postseason each of the past four seasons at home in Game 7. So Anaheim does have home ice advantage, so if Calgary can take it to a Game 7, this can be a fifth season that they've been eliminated at home in, in, in a Game 7. So Anaheim is in a drought at home in, in Game 7s. I actually think I remember, I think it was Calgary, no, I think it was Anaheim and Chicago, and I think... Chicago won in Game 7 in Anaheim, I believe. <clears throat> but yeah, Calgary is back in the playoffs for the first time since 2015, so two years ago, because again, no Canadian teams made the playoffs last year, which was crazy. That was awful, to be honest, because it's like no Canadian teams. Like, I'm Canadian, I want to see Canadian team teams play. So they're back since the first time, so they're back for the first time since 2015. Honestly, Calgary has been good this season. I think they won 10 games in a row, like this season, so that was a good run. But they will not be in there for long if they can't get past Anaheim, of course. They've 0 25 and 0 20 and 5. So they have to actually get their shit together and win there. So, yeah, considering Anaheim has home ice advantage, they must like figure out how to win a game. Fans were even chanting, I think, in the last game in the regular season in Anaheim, saying, You can't win here. So basically boasting, saying, Oh, you can't win here. Well, now they're going to try to prove their asses wrong, so let's see if they can do it. Honestly, I like Anaheim, even though I'm Canadian. Like, the teams I like, I like how I like all the Canadian teams except for Montreal. Even Montreal, I don't really mind, but yeah. <clears throat> oh, by the way, I felt like I rushed all three of those playoff preview games last night. Like, the ones, the one was only, like, five minutes. The one, the one about Montreal and New York, honestly, I think that one's going to be, like, a really good series. I, I never mentioned that, I don't think. But it's going to be, like, a great series because, honestly, just because, yeah. <clears throat> so, the Flames led the NHL with 323 minor, pe minor penalties, followed by the Ducks with 315. Three out of 15 NHL players took at least 30 minor penalties, penalties for Calgary, and each is 23 or younger. Matthew Tkachuk... 19 years old, leads with 40, 34 minor penalties. Dougie Hamilton took 32, and Sam Bennett had 30 penalties. Corey Perry leads in minor penalties. Oh, the sun's coming out, kind of. I'm, I'm, I'm in the basement right now. Corey Perry leads in minor penalties at 33, followed by Kessler with 29. 
Anaheim finished the season the session. I put session. Anaheim finished the season with a penalty kill percentage at point eight four seven, which is fourth in the league. And Calgary ranked twenty. Wait, sorry. Calgary ranked. So I was looking at some something else. Calgary ranked twelfth at eighty one point six percent in the penalty kill. Now hits. So Anaheim's two thousand one hundred and forty six hits has ranked second to the LA Kings with two thousand three hundred and twenty three hits. So they're obviously first. Calgary has ranked 26th with hits with 1,550. 1, Nick Ritchie led, led Anaheim with 247 hits, which is 8th um, in the league. And now the leading after periods and everything. This is going to be, this is definitely Calgary's advantage here. So Calgary was 23, 23, 4, and 1 when leading after one period. And that's pretty insane considering there's still two more period periods to go. So out of 28 games, they won 23. That's, that's, that, that's pretty damn good. So that's a winning per percentage of 0.821, third in the league. When leading going into the third period, Calgary was the NA NHL best, so first in the league, 33-0-1. One loss after, and, and, and they still got a point out of it. One loss. They were almost, they were almost 34 now. That's crazy. Um... Anaheim was 4, 9, and 6 when trailing after the first period, which is a point two one one winning percentage that ranked 25th in the league. They are 2, 19, and 7 when trailing after two periods. Uh, zero, a, de a dot, point zero seven one winning percentage ranked 27th in the league. So basically, when they're down out after the first or second period, their chances of winning are not high. So if Anaheim can get the if if the Calgary can get the first goal and lead even after one or two periods, then maybe they'll be in good hands. So yeah, now we're gonna go into faceoffs, which is basically the last thing that I'm gonna going to talk about. This video I think is already pretty long. My cat's gonna gonna be here meowing meowing again. Ignore her. So now faceoffs. Anaheim has won fifty four point seven percent of its faceoffs this season, which led the NHL. The league's best fa face-off sp specialists are Kessler and Vermette for, from obviously Anaheim. Among the 142 players who took at least 300 face-offs, Vermette's 0.62 face-off winning percentage ranked second, ranked second, I think I put that wrong, ranked second to Matt Duchesne of Colorado who won 62.6%. Kessler ranked sixth at 57.4%. Calgary ranked 19th with a face-off winning percentage of 0.489, and then Monaghan was their top primary face-off player who won 51.5%. My friend is spamming me right now because she also wants to. She wants me to give her a shout-out. She doesn't have a lot of YouTube channel. Well, she does, but she doesn't do anything. So I'll show you that in the end of the video. But yeah, so now my predictions. So there's the pre preview. I gave you a lot more detail on that than the Edmonton one and the Montreal one, I think, but... Sorry about that, this one, because like yesterday, the first one I recorded was Toronto, Washington, and then today, the fir first video I'm doing, the first video you, you do in a day, if, if you're going to record several, then you're always like more energy, like, and then you put it all out in the first video, and then the second, third, and fourth is always like rushed. So sorry that I like rushed all those, but today's video is going to be nice and slow. So I'm actually going to show you out right now. Um, I'm, I, I don't care. So basically, she, she said, shout me out. And then she said jokes afterward, but I'm like, okay, I'll shut you out. So I don't know if you can see that conversation right there. Um, I'll give you that for like a second. This is so random, but yeah. So I gave her a shout out and then she spammed me with, Yas, hello, it's me. I've been wondering if after all these years you'd like to meet to go over everything. Okay. 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 Finally, a fucking sent. I freaking hate the new update on my on messenger. That's another thing that's pissing me off. But sorry, again, back on track. So I think Calgary and Anaheim. This is gonna be a great series, to be honest. Like all of them are. Um, oh, by the way, I'm only gonna do these for the Canadian teams. I'm not gonna do it for like the Pittsburgh, Columbus, or I might as well tell you right now since since I mentioned it for Pitt, Pittsburgh, Columbus. I think Pittsburgh will win in like six for. Um, Minnesota and St. Louis, I think Minnesota will, will win in six. Chicago, Nashville, I think Chicago in six. I think that's it. I don't even know. I think I gave all the other predictions. 
So I'm gonna say Calgary or Anaheim in seven because like I, I think it's me a close series. Like Calgary, they they both have like big, good good stats, and then like it's like it's like one team has good stats on something, and then the other, other team has it horribly. So I mean, it's gonna be a pretty even series, somewhat. I mean, but Calgary definitely has to get over their scoring drought or winning drought in in Anaheim because that's gonna really affect them if they can't win. And then they're gonna be out in the first round, despite them being a really good team this year. So basically, that's all I really have to say. So today's Wednesday. The Stanley Cup playoffs start today. I will tell you all the games for today, just because this is an NHL playoff thing. So for today's games, Bruins and the Senators at seven, game one in Ottawa. Sharks and Oilers, Game 1 at 10 o'clock in Edmonton. Rangers and Canadians at 7 o'clock, Game 1 in Montreal. The Jackets and Penguins in Pitt Pittsburgh, Game 1 at 7.30. The Blues in Minnesota taking on the Wild, obviously Game 1 at 9.30 p.m. Tomorrow's games, Flames and Ducks at 10.30 tomorrow in Anaheim. So the Maple Leafs and Capitals in Washington at 7. And the Predators and Blackhawks in Chicago at 8. So those are all the Game 1s. I hope you liked all my preview videos. Sorry that they weren't for the American teams as well, but just so much work and I'm, and I'm lazy. So I will probably do a Rob, Rob, Raptors video for like the Raptors when they start the playoffs, which will be soon as well. So I hope you guys liked it. Again, a Calgary or Anaheim in six or seven, probably seven. Go Calgary, go. May the best team win. And yeah, by the way, for round two, if there's any more Canadian teams left, I'm going to continue going, going on with that. So... Yeah, I'm going to continue going on with that. So, like, say Calgary wins, and I'll do Calgary versus someone for round two, and then a pre preview predictions, whatever. So, that's basically it. So, I hope you guys liked the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.